You agree there's much to be done in a new administration to restore? Well, right. I won't repeat right. what you But in the case of missile defense, Senator Obama said it had to be, quote, proven. That wasn't proven when Ronald Reagan said we would do SDI, which is missile defense. And it was major, a major factor in bringing about the end of the Cold War. We seem to come full circle again. Senator Obama still doesn't quite understand or doesn't get it that if we fail in Iraq, it encourages Al Qaeda. They would establish a base in Iraq. With the, the consequences of defeat, which would result from his plan of withdrawal and uh, uh, according to date certain, regardless of conditions, according to our military leaders, according to every expert, would lead to defeat, possible defeat, loss of all the fragile sacrifice that we've made of American blood and treasure, which grieves us all. All of that would be lost if we followed Senator Obama's plan to have specific dates with withdrawal, regardless of conditions on the ground. You, and General Petraeus says, we have had great success, but it's very fragile, and we can't do what Senator Obama wants to do. That is a central issue of our time, and I think Americans will judge very seriously as to whether that's the right path or the wrong path, and who should be the next president of the United States. You see the same connections that uh, Senator oh, uh, McCain there, did? There, There's no doubt. Look, uh, over the last eight years, this administration, along with Senator McCain, uh, have been solely focused on Iraq. That has been their priority. That has been where all our resources have gone. In the meantime, bin Laden is still out there. He is not captured. He is not killed. Al-Qaeda is resurgent. In the meantime, we've got challenges, for example, with China, where we are borrowing billions of dollars. They now hold a trillion dollars worth of our debt. And they are active in countries like, in, in regions like Latin America and Asia and Africa. They are, uh, the, the, the conspicuousness of their presence is only matched by our absence because we've been focused on Iraq. We have weakened our capacity to project power around the world because we have viewed everything through this single lens. Not to mention, look at our economy. We are now spending 10 or billion dollars or more every month. And that means we can't provide health care to people who need it. We can't invest in science and technology, which will determine whether or not we are going to be competitive in the long term. There has never been a country on Earth that saw its economy decline and yet maintained its military superiority. So this is a national security issue. We haven't adequately funded veterans care. Uh, I sit on the Veterans Affairs Committee, and we've got, uh, I meet veterans all across the country who are trying to figure out how can I get disability payments. I've got post-traumatic stress disorder, and yet I can't get treatment. So we have put all chips in right there, and nobody is talking about losing this war what we are talking about is recognizing that the next president has to have a broader strategic vision about all the challenges that we face. That's been missing over the last eight years. That sense is something that I want to restore. I've been involved, as I mentioned to you before, in virtually every major national security challenge we've faced in the last 20-some years. There are some advantages to experience and knowledge and judgment, and I, and I honestly don't believe that Senator Obama has the knowledge or experience and has made the wrong judgments in a number of areas, including his initial reaction to Russian in, uh, aggression in Georgia, to his, uh, uh, you know, we've seen this stubbornness before in this administration to cling to a belief that somehow the, the surge has not succeeded and failing to acknowledge that he was wrong about the surge is shows to me that we that that we need more flexibility in a president of the United States than that. As far as our other issues that he brought up are concerned, I know the veterans, I know them well. And I know that they know that I'll take care of them. And I've been proud of their support and their and their recognition of my service to the veterans. And I love them and I'll take care of them. And they know that I'll take care of them. And that's going to be my job. But also I have the ability and the knowledge and the background to make, make the right judgments to keep this country safe and secure. Reform, prosperity, and peace. These are major challenges to the United States of America. 
I don't think I need any on-the-job training. I'm ready to go at it right now. Well, l l let me just make a closing point. Um, you know, my father came from Kenya. That's where I get my name. And uh, in the 60s, uh, he wrote letter after letter to come to college here in the United States because the notion was that there was no other country on Earth where you could make it if you try. The ideals and the values of the United States inspired the entire world. I don't think any of us can say that uh, our standing in the world now, the, the way children around the world look at the United States, is the same. And part of what we need to do, what the next president has to do, and this is part of our judgment, this is part of how we are going to keep America safe, is to, to send a message to the world that we are going to invest in issues like education. We are going to invest in issues that, that relate to how ordinary people uh, are able to live out their dreams. And that is something that I'm going to be committed to as President of the United States. A few seconds. We're almost finished. Jim, when I came home from prison, I saw our veterans being very badly treated. And it made me sad. And I embarked on an effort to resolve the POW-MIA issue, which we did in a bipartisan fashion. And then I worked on normalization of relations between our two countries so that our veterans could come all the way home. I guarantee you, as President of the United States, I know how to heal the wounds of war, I know how to deal with our adversaries, and I know how to deal with our friends. And that ends this debate tonight. On October 2nd, next Thursday, also at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, the two vice presidential candidates will debate at Washington University in St. Louis. My PBS colleague, Gwen Eiffel, will be the moderator. For now, from Oxford, Mississippi, thank you, senators both. I'm Jim Lehrer. Thank you, and good night. Good job, John. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. And so there it is. Uh, he gives a kiss uh, to his wife, and uh, another kiss there to his wife. Uh, both uh, of these candidates answering questions for more than 90 minutes, a little bit more than the 90 minutes that had been scheduled. The first half actually uh, really didn't get into foreign policy. It was all on the uh, economic crisis facing the United States right now. That proposed bailout of Wall Street, uh, a rescue plan of Main Street, as President Bush likes to call it. Uh, both of them expressing their views. And then only then did they get to the war in Iraq, uh, relations with Iran, what's going on with Russia. It was spirited at times.